What's up everyone? My name is Jeff. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're back in the topic of CMake. You just got to create a branch and get on with it. Today we're going to talk a little bit about functions and macros uh, and motivate why you might want to use them in your CMake. Now remember this series is about just tips and tricks and some thoughts about CMake and, and how you can control complexity that creeps up uh, when you encounter CMake both for yourself and in the wild. Hopefully these thoughts will help you figure out how to improve the CMake that you're working with so that you can make it a tool that works for you and not against you. So with all that said, let's dive into some code. Today we're talking about functions and macros. There are two different things in CMake. They both have a very good purpose uh, to exist. And we're going to talk about why you should use them and what's the difference between them and how they can help out your CMake. So if we're looking at this today, uh, it's a very simple CMake minimum required project at executable. Cool. This is very small. When we talk about large CMake code bases, there's usually a lot of things going on. Like if we jump over here to Osprey, just our CMake, there's a lot going on. There's like this CMake list and there's a nested CMake list in here with even more going on. Um, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, arguably thousands of lines of CMake, uh, all with lots of different things that it needs to exist for. Um, but at the end of the day, CMake has lots of features to do lots of things. And one way we control that complexity is with functions and macros. When you have lots of smaller problems that add up to a bigger problem, you can create functions to represent those smaller ones and then have a higher level reasoning uh, in the code that calls those functions. So let's start with a, a very simple function that We've had an Osprey for a long time, but I think that people should have it in their, in their code bases as well. Uh, it's a print function, but first let's motivate it a little bit. In CMake, we message to the command line all the time. So we do that with the message command and we might say, hey, I wanna print out some variable name. Um, and so we dereference like that inside a message command. Great, now if we came over to the command line, we ran CMake, cool we would see that the value of that variable is hello world. What happens though, when that variable doesn't exist? Like project name foo. In such a small example, it's it may not seem like a big deal that's like, where did this blank line come from? But if you have a lot going on and you wanna be able to print the variable uh, and see what its value is, that this can end up being difficult to work with, is you could do stuff like this. Um, like we could say, uh, project name is is equal to this and what that would do is give me hey the value of project name is equal to hello world but this is not generic uh, we actually have to then write this message every single time we want to print a variable wouldn't it be nicer if we could just say I want to print project name and we got this well guess what we can write a function to do this uh, so if we write a function called print when you start a function, then the first name you give it is the name of <laughs> printf. That's not what I want. Uh, the name of the function that I want to make it callable with. Uh, and then after that are names of variables of the arguments you passed to this function. So we want this argument, you know, to have a name. We're going to call it var. And just like many things in CMake, you have to provide a, a equivalent end to the, the begin construct, uh, like loops and control flow and functions are no different. So we're gonna take message and then have to figure out how to name a string that looks like this. Now here we can talk a little bit about dereferencing variables where uh, what we really want is the value of var that is passed into here is project name. So if we message var and get rid of this now if we just message var what we're going to get is project name but what's really cool about dereferencing variables is you can dereference the dereference of a variable you don't have to put it i, I don't have to take this value and set it in a variable uh, to be able to use it um, so we can do something like this so what this says is dereference var and then go ahead, take that string that that dereference to, which will be project name, and then dereference it again. It's almost like a pointer to dereference, to be honest. Uh, we need to save this file. And if we run it, 
there you have it. So now anywhere you are in your CMake, if you establish this function like super high up uh, in your root CMake list, we can go and just print all kinds of things like print, uh, if we said project name foo, that would be empty and we would see that. We'd see the value project name foo is nothing. Uh, so this is this can be really helpful um, when going throughout large CMake code bases and you don't want to rewrite the same message command over and over again. I just want to print that variable. Um, this is a, a really useful version of that to use. However, we can do a little more. If we took this out, CMake actually gives us generic names of all of the uh, parameters passed to a function. Now, if you have a very fixed interface to your function, please just go ahead and, and leave these named. Um, it, it's a lot clearer to give a very specific name to your uh, arguments if you want, but we, we could make this variadic. And all that means is we could say print more than one variable, like um, project name uh, foo. Uh, maybe I'll just set a variable up here. Um, Ivar to hello world, because you know, all about hello world, and we're gonna print myvar. So what do we do with this? Um, we can take this and let's first just talk about arg n. So we can we can message arg n, which is all of the arguments passed to print. So if we then run this, we see we get a list of everything we passed in. You can also see how many arguments were passed in with argc. So if you run this, we get three. We passed in three things. And we can then uh, numerically query each uh, individual parameter with argv and then a number. So we get argv zero, one, two, uh, let's actually go one, two, three one, two, and three. And what this gives us is the first, so we have argv of zero, it's the first parameter, argv one, two, and then of course all variables after that uh, are just empty, as you would expect. Uh, so this gives us every all the information we could possibly need to know to then loop over them. We're gonna loop over arg n, and we're just gonna do what we did before, but do it for all of the uh, all of the parameters passed in. So we could say we're gonna we're gonna do a for each, and we're gonna take var all of the values that are in arg n, and all of those. And we need to do an end for each. We're gonna do a message like we did before, uh, exactly like we did before, where we take var and your reference var. So now if we go down here, we are going to, instead of getting, uh, like we had before, we printed them all out, we're now going to get this as if print was called on each one of these individually. There we go. Project name's hello world. Project name foo is, is an empty variable and my var was set to hello world. Super, super handy little function. Now, this is a function, meaning if we were to set local variables, here, like if I were to set um, my var to no longer say hello, that wouldn't do anything. So if we then, uh, if we were to print my var and then print it again, come back over here, it's going to say hello world twice. If we were to then turn this into a macro, that would fundamentally change what this is. So a macro is similar to a function, except it is as if the lines inside the macro were inlined at the call site, as you would expect from other languages. Um, basically everything you think about a macro is the same, but think of it as this being inlined down here, meaning this set value is now equivalent of us calling this code in the first print, and then set, and then the next print will go and print the new updated value. So if we run CMake again, mm, we now see the side effect that the macro had. So macros can be helpful and they can be good. It should just be something you cautiously choose because macros are often defined somewhere else 
somewhere off screen in another file, even buried somewhere up at the beginning of a CMake list if you have a really large CMake list file. And so functions help control the scope because this is this is now a new scope that this variable is locally defined in. It helps control what can leak out of code found in this callable thing, whether it be a macro or a function. A macro will leak things, uh, which sometimes is desirable. Functions do not. I think the best precedence or the best order here should be start with a function until you need the side effect of a macro to leak out variables that you set. Uh, and that tends to control complexity a little better, uh, similar to, again, other languages, uh, like a, this is a similar rule of thumb and, and C or C++. Let's go look at some examples in the wild. Uh, I'm going to go over to Osprey, uh, where there's, this is all open source code up on GitHub. This is something I've worked on for, for years. Uh, we have a bunch of, of yes macros inside of Osprey that, that do some, some interesting things. Um, like we basically are giving a name to to solving a a sub problem. Um, now there's because we have compatibility with fairly old versions of CMake. Um, this this probably could get cleaned up now with newer CMake. But we have a macro that configures a default build type. So we have decided to prefer that none the none build type is not something that we allow. We only select between debug release and rel with deb info. And uh, we have a macro that solves this where. Uh, we we make sure that CMake build type set. If it's not, we forcibly release or stick in a default value. Um, this configuration types, we also uh, set a property on CMake build type. So if you open up CCMake, um, you can swap between known values. This is actually a, a really, um, if I hop over to Osprey, this is, this is how you set to be able to cycle between these instead of having to type it out. Not complicated, but the point is, is that we have a, a, a macro that collects worrying about CMake build type and, and wraps it. So in our CMake list, uh, in, in code that calls this, this macro, we just know that that's sectioned off somewhere. And there's others you'll see here. We have custom logic to verify that the Embry that we found has the features that Osprey expects. Um, we ask Embry, hey, what, what ISAs? Um, where you compiled for to make sure we enable the right ISPC targets. Um, all kinds of these smaller sub problems that uh, are, are, I think, easier to reason about when that's the only thing that section of code is worrying about versus if we hand inlined all of these things, this would just become a mega list of, of spaghetti code. Oh, and there's one more thing. Uh, I wanted to show if you're going to go ahead and have this print function in your CMake in your project. There's another really useful one to have too, which is called printenv. And all it is, you take the variables you pass in and you print them as if they are, in, or you print them as environment variables. So with CMake, you can dereference variables that come from the, the shell environment that CMake was called with. Uh, so if I go ahead and we're gonna do this print and print env, and I still need to set my var to Hello. I run this. Um, that's Osprey. And I run this. We get my var is a local variable in CMake, our normal dereferencing of a variable. It is defined because I set it here and then print it here. Uh, if we though look for my var in the environment, uh, there there is nothing. But we could export my var equals world. Now we run CMake. Now we got an environment variable, my var. Basically, at the end of the day, it is looking at local variables you have defined in CMake and environment variables. Mechanically very similar, uh, two very helpful things, but of course, there's a million more functions you should be writing for your builds to help control that complexity. So I hope this helps. Well, that's enough for today. Hopefully, these thoughts and ideas help you in the code that you're working on. If you like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button down below. Make sure you subscribe and let me know down in the comments below what you think. What are some ways that you're using uh, functions and macros to control the complexity you're encountering? And let me know what you think about where the series could go to make sure it's helpful for you. All right, until next time, happy coding, everyone.